Hi and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I'd like to say welcome to the new subscribers. Also, I'd like to say thank you to those that have donated via the super thanks. Really is appreciated and it does help towards making videos. Now today's live match is the first round of the Census Lifestyle Autumn League, which is, I think it's six rounds. I can only fish one of them, which is this one. All on canals and it's teams of six. And there's 14 teams fishing it, which is brilliant. 78 anglers on, on a match nowadays is rare. So well done, Alan Round, for organising it year in, year out. I'm fishing for Maver Midlands. Like I say, I can only fish the first round because I've got other commitments, winter leagues and that on commercials, mostly, after this round. So Ben Garbage done the draw and I've been handed peg seven on Grub Street, peg A7, middle of the section. Couple of good pegs in the section. Um, I feel this is a steady peg. I wouldn't say it's a good peg, but we should catch some fish off it. So nice and steady. Seeing that I've just put some ground bait on the inside there because I'm expecting to catch a few goods in here. I've set up my normal worm approach as well as squat lines. So I'm fishing worm down the track and I'm also going to put a worm line in at 14 and a half metres and over slightly to the left of that bush in front of me I'm going to put all my ground bait. I'm going to put a line in at nine and a half metres which is just down the shelf and then one at 11 which is going up the shelf and then into 13 metres which is as far as I'm planning to fish because it, it goes shallow, really shallow after that. But at 13 metre line it's just about the no a nice depth really. I had got bread with me but we had a couple of boats while we were setting up. It already had a bit of colour in it and I thought I'm not going to use the bread today. But I'm going to put a hemp line in as well to the right hand side of that bush. It's just one of those. It's just it may work, it may not. It probably won't but you never know. So I'm putting a hemp line in. I'm going to feed it all day and I'll drop on it periodically. If it goes under, it'll be a bonus. Now, like I said on the caption, the all-in was about two minutes earlier than when I actually started because I was faffing around trying to get the cameras ready, basically. And you don't get a lot of time to set up on these matches. I mean, we've had an hour and a half from the draw, so we've had to drive to the venue from the, the draw location sort the parking out and then get down to your pegs. So it was a bit of a rush to get everything ready. I've just about done it, but don't, like I say, I'm a couple of minutes late starting. And while I'm feeding, Richard Knowles is to my right on peg eight. He's already fed, obviously, because he was on time and he's caught a decent perch over straight away while I'm still feeding. So I'm already playing catch up. You'll notice I have my pole up in the air as well. Where I'm shipping to, there's a high bank behind you. And I just can't get my roller quite high enough to avoid it. So it's just catching the ground as I ship back. It's all right when I'm shipping at 11 metres, but when I get to 13 metres plus, it starts catching a bit of gravel off the bank and I'm getting rubbish up the inside of the pole. And it sounds a bit like a rattle at times. So I periodically held it up and empty it back out.
So that's all my lines fed. Just going to put a bit of water in my casters and a little bit in the end. I've darkened off just nice now, so I don't want them going any further. And I'm going to start on a worm head over at 14 and a half metres, which is around the same region as what Richard's just had his perch on. And I'm still using my old glasses. They haven't come back yet. I'm really struggling. Oh, you know, look at me. Can't see what I'm doing, basically. <laughs> and that's putting a worm on a size 16 hook. I struggle on. Now, the worm, for me, has been brilliant on this venue this year. Yeah, look, I'm emptying out my pole again, look. It's been absolutely fantastic for me this year, the worm. Doing it how I do, put it, cut it, I mince my worms up quite fine, and I feed it quite regular. And then jig a worm about on top of it. Sometimes I'll put a big worm on and just hold it still. A lot of the fish I've caught this year have been on the jig, moving the float around. I'm loose feeding squats up to my left, to the left of that bush. And I'm going, I'm, manage, I'm trying to make them spray from nine and a half metres all the way to 13 metres so I can th keep all three lines fed. Now I've had a look on the worm and I haven't had a bite on it, which was surprising. Usually get an indication pretty quickly, even if it's only a small fish, but I never had nothing that on that time. I've actually had to change to my sunglasses now because I can see a little bit better out of them than I can out of my old prescription ones. It's still not ideal though. So no bites on the worm over. Look down the track and there's my first fish. Little perch about an ounce. I'm off the mark. But we're about 20 minutes into the match now so it's a real slow start for me. But where there's one, hopefully there's some more. Feeding the squat again. Feeding casters over the top of that worm that I've put over. And now more bites. It's not going so well today, the worm. We're going to have another look over that. And see if I can catch anything over there before I go on the squat and try and start putting some fish in the net. Still looking for a bounce at the moment. Just put a little bit of grease on the tip of the flower to try and help me see it that little bit better. Hopefully my glasses will be back soon. Well, I'm praying they are anyway. I've put a little cad pot on now and I'm just putting a little tiny bit of worm in the pot with a few casters, probably only about six to ten casters. So I can keep it nice and tight. Dropping it in, then pick the rig up and lay it in. I do manage to hook something, but it's not a fish. Piece of bramble sticking under the water. Luckily it just falls off without getting too entangled. But still no bites off perch though. Starting to worry a bit now. I'm nearly half hour into the match and I've still not got anything other than that one little perch. I'm going to the stage where I feel I'm going to need to start putting some fish in the net. So I'm just going to have a quick look on the inside. 
over where I put that bowl of ground bait, see if there's any gudging about. Floods I'm using on this line is an half a gram Preston Kerry. And it's got a bulk of shot with a dropper underneath. Just so I can get it down pretty quick. But I'm using a normal top kit with elastic in. Gone are the days when I used to use a whip on this line. Because you never know what you're going to hook nowadays. There's a lot more bigger fish about nowadays than there used to be. I used to have whips from one and a half metres all the way up to six metres. But we'd always start on a one and a half, two metre whip on the inside. Don't do that anymore. There we go, there's a goodie. They're quite small, the goodie are, but you can keep them coming. You can put a weight together of them. Fishing a single fluoro pinky on a size 22 N10 on that line. Throwing a few squats over the top, and there we go, there's another one. It can take a long time to put a weight together of these. You've got to get your head down. The inside line only lasts as long as it takes for the first bow to come along normally. It can be a good line until a boat turns up. I don't know why it ruins it, but it just does. And when I flick them squats in, I think I'll flick one down my top as well, look. I'm just trying to get it out. I can feel it crawling around against my chest. It's still in there. <laughs> There's not many canal venues I go to nowadays where you can actually catch gudgeon. Shroppy's still got quite a few in there. None of the big ones that used to be about, these are a lot smaller, these are. But like the staff's will start, you rarely catch goodin on there nowadays. And that used to be a dominant species on the staff's will on the venues I used to fish. Weird. So I got up to about 20 fish on the inside before it started slowing down. So another quick look down the track, see if I can make anything happen before I go over. And there's a fish again. Another little perch. And I'm just lifting the rig there, lowering it back in, and as I lower it down, it goes under. And this one's a slightly better fish. I'm going to have to slip the net under this one. At long last, an half decent fish. Got to be five or six ounces that. Again, it's a perch. That's what I'm after. I want a boat load of them. Worms okay. Go back in again. I'm really having to work this bait, this hook bait.
holding it in as long as I can before this boat gets here, see if anything happens. No. I'll say I was having to I was having to really work the hook bait on the worm. The bites weren't free and fast. Jigging never really worked. I found the bites were kept coming if I'd lifted and dragged the rig around or just drag the rig against the flow up the peg. Sometimes it'd go. Have another quick look on the inside before we do anything else. And we'll prepare some more feed for the track. Just dropping a little bit of water out my amp into it there. And cut a few more worms up. So I mean about the inside line, the boat's gone through, it's, no, it's never the same. There is the odd occasion where it's okay, you'll carry on catching, but nine times out of ten, it just ruins the inside line, even though it's got nowhere near it, to be fair, the boat. I don't know why that happens. So we'll drop that feed in on the track line. And we'll go and have a look on the squat line over. The nine and a half meter line, I'm using the same rig as I'm using on the inside because it's virtually the same depth. We'll go and have a look what's over there. And it's the same kind of stamp gudging that you're catching on the inside. And I've already got a feeling that it's going to be a squat match, to be fair. Because the, the worm's not giving me any confidence at the minute. I ain't had a bite on it over. Only three bites on it down the track. There's a few boats moving about. And it just doesn't seem like it's going to produce. And I can't afford to spend too much time wasting too much time on it when I could be putting fish in the net but I will keep dropping on it periodically in between squat fishing keep the bait going in And although the fish are small, like I say, I'm still going in the net. Nice oh, and steady. Fish and chuck.
all like peas in a pod these goods and they're all exactly the same size Yeah, look, there's an odd, slightly better roach, that one. You don't tend to get too many bank walkers down here. You do get the occasional ones, though. Making sure I'm feeding them squats all the time. And it's a fisher chuck. That one's tiny. Just noticed the boat just come around the corner. So I'm gonna get on the worm and have a quick look before he gets here and see if I can catch me a perch. And there we go, we got one. This one's slightly better, this is. This is more like it. Notice I'll get a good hard whack on the strike. Using my double sixes again. That's a better fish. That's got to be about 12 ounce to a pound, that one. It'll take a few gudging to catch that up. This boat's almost on me, so look, I'm not even putting my net down. I'm getting my rig in there quickly. Let's see if I can snag another one before it gets here. No such luck, so back over on the squat. This time I'm dropping over to the 11 metre line. See what's over there, if anything. Again, the same kind of stamp fish. Little gudgeon. Just the odd roach mixed in. Just using the two's elastic on this. You try not to top the fish, but with them being this small, there's nothing you can do about it. That one's slightly better, a little bit bigger. Little roach, that one. This one's a better fish. I have to slip the net under this one. It's a little skimmer. Three or four rounds. Nice little bonus. Be nice if there's a few of these around. And then back to the little roach and gudgeon. That's the kind of stamp you want to be catching. One of them a chuck would be nice.
She notices about on the way again. We'll have a quick look in the track before he gets here. Keeping the squat going in there. No, no joy that time. I'm on the phone to Scott Dudson there. He's on the MPEG in my section peg one. Going to be hard to beat him. MPEGs on the shrop here, just tremendous. Really hard pegs to beat. So consistent they are. Top up my ground bait. I've put some worm feed ready there to put in down the track, but I've decided to hang on a bit because there's an, I can see another boat on its way. If I put it in before he gets here, I'm convinced it just gets washed away. So I'll just drop that ball in and get back on the 11 metre line for a bit and keep putting some fish in the net. There's not a lot of difference in the depth between 11 and 13 metres. So just adding the section on here, drop it on the 13 metre line and see what's about over there. Miss a bite straight away. That's a decent route off the 13 metre line. It's up, that's where they're hanging out. That's a better fish. Again on the 13 metre line. It's a roach this is. Ah, oh, lovely. Gotta be four ounce, maybe five. Nice bonus.
giving me up that my end line might work this but I'll carry on with this for now and back to the little fish Emptying the pole out again. Sounds like a baby's rattle when I'm shipping in and out with that much rubbish inside it. Full of rubbish it is. There's just some days where you've got to get your head down and just put in the net what you can because the bonuses are few and far between. you just got to hope that, like I have done today, I've caught a couple of bonus fish for probably 10 ounce on this line. Well, this and the 11 metre line. Because the worm's just not working today. Well, not for me anyway. I've had four fish on it. Those four fish would probably go pound three. Add that to the two bonus fish I've had on the pinky. So you're looking at about a pound 13. If I can put a couple of couple of three pounder squat fish together as well, be a respectable weight, this will. So it's just a case of taking your brain out and just keep shipping. In between bouts, that is. I've stopped burning any ground bait on that nine and a half meter line now as well. There's enough boats to keep the fish over on in the shallower water. That one's gone quite far over as well. So it looks like I'm going to be spending my time between 11 and 13 meters. Which is just out the way of the boats. Well, most of them anyway. I keep dropping the worm in periodically, hoping that I catch a bonus fish on it. But I'm not too optimistic. So I just keep shipping.
shipping and feeding. And topping up every now and then. I have a good yesterday. Good luck. Hi. I'm everywhere in the night. I've just topped at the 13 metre line, so I'm going to drop on the 11 metre line and have a quick look. Now, joy before this bout comes. And now it looks like I'm going to be spending my time on the 13 metre line, as there doesn't seem to be a lot around at the 11 metre line now. Well, I'll keep feeding it though, just in case. Some point in the match, it might quieten down with the bouts, and the fish will venture back out into the canal. We've just got to make sure there's some feed there for them if they do go there. And back over to the 13 metre line. And steady away again. Collecting fish from one end of the pole and dirt from the other. <laughs> This one a chuck. Them small fish, like I say, but they are worth catching. Especially when those around you aren't catching so much. Richard Niles to me right's catching steady. The chap to my left's not doing so well. I've just got to make sure I stay in touch with Richard. And you get the odd bonus fish look. Slightly bigger. It's one a chuck. One every put in look. Bit more worm. Feeding this on the 14.5 metre line again. I've still to catch a fish off this line yet. But at some point it might work. So it's worth keep topping up on it. Just in case. One bite could be a £3 perch. You never know. But if you're not putting a bait in, you'll never catch it. 
emptying the pole again, look. Getting quite a little collection of dirt behind me here now. Slipped a piece of hemp on here. I'm just going to go and have a quick look on my hemp line and see if there's anything there. You never know. I'd like to think it'll go under. But it doesn't. fish the end block I do with the worm pretty much I'm always moving that bait so as it just settles and then if you don't get a bite pretty quick I'll lift it up and I'll drop it back down again it's another one of them methods that tends to work well you catch a lot of fish through the water on hemp but not today drop it over on the 14 and a half meter line again with the worm and see if I can catch that bonus I'm after. I won't waste too much time on this line though. If it doesn't go under pretty quick, I'll be back on that squat. There you go, nothing. Couple of minutes on there, nothing at all. Don't want to waste any more time on it. I'm going to put this debris up the pole. And back into the little fish. Just one of those days where big fish lines never really produce for me. It's a good job the little fish were willing to have a feed. I've just noticed there's a boat on the way again, so I'm going to have a quick look down the trap before he gets here. I've probably got three or four minutes before he actually gets to me, which is more than enough time to catch a fish if there's one there already.
Quick, is he gonna go? No. Get off it. Back on the little fish. It's solid with little fish. What a joke. Just managed to catch one just before this boat gets here, look. Had to ship him over the top of the boat. There you go, little tiny roach. Another top up needed. Starting to run out of ground bait now. Mixed up a better bag and half before we started. Still enough to see me out, I think. All the time I'm fishing this line, I'm thinking at some point I will start catching some better stamp roach. Doesn't always happen, but towards the later stages of the match, it sometimes does. Until that does happen, we'll just keep on going. We're having to wade through some really small fish at the minute. See if we can get one more in before the whistle goes. No. <laughs> Too late. It's gone. So that was it. Got 120 odd fish, I would have said. Scott Dudes in there. He's been on peg one. Plopper next to him. He's been on peg 14. I think that was an end peg as well. Goonie, get out of the way of the camera, you clown. There you go. Four bonus fish, biggest being that perch, 12 ounce odd. Maybe a little tiny bit bigger. And some of the fish that small, they're slipping through the basket. Not many. There's one. And another one.
respectable days fishing. Decent section points. I ended up with four pounds, four ounces and eight drams, which was fourth in the 14 peg section. And I won the money section as Plopper, who was on the other end peg in my money section, managed to sneak in the frame. So a decent return for the team. The team did brilliant on the day as well, winning it on the day. So that's a great start to the league. So job done. So if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.